what's happening guys it's your buddy Grizz and I hope you like the new little intro style I tried out there I've been using the same little five second intro thingy for quite some time now and I just decided I felt like trying out something new maybe with a little more editing flair but if you uh, I always like sorry I always like my short little intro because it allows me to get sort of get to the commentary right away which is something that I know I appreciate with youtubers that I enjoy watching so I'm gonna come back to this at the end of the episode but basically I want you guys to just let me know if you do not like the little intros like for kid up episodes at least uh, let me know if you just want me to keep the five second intro thingy and get right to the, the gritty so <laughs> Yeah, just let me know. Say something like, Grizz, I didn't know you was all fancy like that, or keep it simple, stupid. You know, something along those lines. <laughs> but I'd rather not waste any more time, so let's go. Welcome to Kid Up. This week, I am taking the AWS out for a rip. If you're not familiar, Kid Up is my weekly review series for Battlefield 4. And as you saw during the intro, this kit was suggested by Taj Moti and he calls it the BF Support Noob Class. AWS with a bipod, lovely. Muzzle brake, laser sight, and a coyote optic. Secondary is the 93R, and C4 and ammo are my tools of the trade. The noob trade. <laughs> and RGO impact grenades to round it out, and of course, I'm running the defensive field upgrade because that's exactly what a good noob would do. In addition to all that, he also had some special instructions for me, which were to play Metro or Lockers, camp behind corners with C4, behind doors with the AWS, and not forget to throw nades. He also says, don't push it, just camp and throw down ammo bags only when you need them. Do not help people with ammo. Have fun getting at least 10,000 points for doing absolutely nothing. Before everyone gets pissed off at Taj Modi, he also said right after that that his comment was completely a joke. So, uh, you know, don't get too pissed off at him. Oh, there's a little cheeseburger action right there. I'm gonna start calling the C4s cheeseburgers because some people, I know some people will call them C4 sandwiches, but uh, you know, they're kind of cheesy, so hence cheeseburger. That's what they're gonna be called in the world of Grizzno from now on. So even though the instructions on how to play this setup were a joke, I still thought the class itself had monster potential, so I decided to run with it. Uh, but I won't be employing the tactics you suggested, sir, because that would just make me feel dirty on the inside. <laughs> also, I just played on any map because I'm just kind of sick of lockers and metro. <sighs> yeah. I have done the AWS before, but that was before the patch, so let's revisit and take a closer look, shall we? The AWS's damage model is slightly different after the patch, capable of only a maximum 24 damage now. I do believe the minimum stayed the same as pre-patch at 18. 100 rounds per minute, or sorry, 100 rounds per magazine and 780 rounds per minute is uh, the fire rate and ammo capacity on this guy. And that means that uh, it's pretty much on par with the M249 and MG4, which are two of the more popular LMGs for a run and gun support player. Finally, the AWS's reload times clock in at 4.85 seconds when empty, and 3.5 seconds with a round still in the chamber. One more cheeseburger, cheeseburger for you, sir. <laughs> um, discounting the M249 and the MG4, you will be pretty hard pressed to find a more balanced LMG than the AWS, really. Those reload times are beaten only by the two RPKs in this class but they both have much smaller magazines, the RPK-12 being the larger mag at 60 rounds, still falls quite short of the big hundy that the AWS provides. So it's a beast, plain and simple. Extremely versatile, uh, the AWS works wonders in close quarters combat thanks to that high rate of fire, but another thing that helps tremendously is the hip fire accuracy you're also going to be enjoying while you're using this weapon. So, it absolutely makes sense to slap a laser sight on the AWS at all times, I think. Especially if you're planning on playing aggressively and PTFOing like a boss. I can't tell you how many times a hipfire saved my butt in close quarters, and this guy will definitely, definitely allows you to get the job done from the hip. And yeah, Metro! You thought I was, you thought I didn't, wasn't gonna play any Metro for you. Well, fooled you! Uh, yeah, where was I? So, uh, Muzzle Brake is also a great choice on the AWS, and not that it has a lot of upwards recoil to begin with, but I ran the Muzzle Brake the whole time, and I didn't really find it to be much of a detriment to my accuracy when firing full auto, and it certainly makes it easier to stay on target when you're at distance. 
But when you are going and trying to go from downtown, uh, tap firing is your friend, friend. Now, I'm not going to really talk too much about the coyote, other than mentioning that I've been using it a lot more, and uh, I don't know, it might be creeping up on the reflex for my favorite optic, we'll see. Uh, I do want to spend a short moment or two on the bipod. This thing is grossly m misrepresented, I think. It gets a terrible rap from people who fit Taj Modi's support noob description to a T. Rest assured, you will get some rage from other players if all you're doing is sitting on the edge of the map by a flag, proned out with your bipod, making it rain. Although the bipod is often looked at as a noob attachment, I think there's still a ton of value in running it uh, when you're not playing like a douche as well. In my eyes, there is absolutely nothing wrong with setting that bipod, bipod up in a nice strategic location, maybe around a flag, and mowing a couple guys down while you capture said flag. Even if that means improvising and proning out, no matter where you are in the level, there's always at least one good flat surface you can deploy your bipod on, the good old ground itself. Now, I'm not condoning any shenanigans here, guys. Let's get that straight. I don't want to see anyone proned out with the bipod for any more than 30 seconds. I can't get behind that sort of behavior. <laughs> Make sure you're moving around, and really it's going to be your, to your benefit, because once you kill someone from your little camp spot, you know at least one person on the enemy team knows exactly where you are. How oblivious were those guys? Even this guy right here. Didn't even see me at all. I don't know how he didn't know. Anyways. As far as the rest of the kit goes, the 93R isn't as awesome as it once was in Battlefield 3, if you ask me. It's a little underwhelming, but it does make a great finisher for when you run out of ammo in your primary. Uh, the C4 and the ammo, I think Taj Modi wanted me to use the little ammo bag, like the gimpy one, but <laughs> I actually wanted to show this how good this setup could actually be, so I decided to use the correct ammo box, and I did not <laughs> ignore my teammates' calls for ammo. That is just sacrilege, my friend. I know you're only j joking anyway. I did, however, use that C4 some, for some tasty cheeseburger kills, as you guys saw. Uh, obviously, you're kind of a jerk if you just stand at the top of the stairs in Metro, throw a burger after burger like that dude in the intro. But if you use it at the right times, it can really get you out of some tight jams and also help you pick up a couple multi kills here and there. So, overall, I'd say this setup could rank as one of the best for a run and gun support player, no matter what the environment. But in close quarters, you will surely find the AWS can compete with the best weapons in the game, no problem. And you you're going to be laughing, my friend. You're going to be laughing. But uh, that about wraps things up for this week for me, guys. One more thing Taj Mohdi, uh mentioned in his comment that I want to reply to you about was that you said you were from Slovakia, and you had wondered if I had ever heard of your country before. The answer is, of course I have, guy! Slovakia provides some top-notch hockey players who usually event end up over here in North America playing for the NHL. So naturally, since I'm a Canadian, I have a passion for the wonderful game of hockey. And yeah, Marian Hosa, Marian Gabrik, Zdeno Chara, I could go on. So yes, I have definitely heard of Slovakia before. You figured I wouldn't have. Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and you'd like to leave it some love, you can always do so by leaving it a thumbs up. And if you're new around here, then what are you waiting for, guy? Hit that subscribe button. Two final quick things before I go. Let me know if you'd rather I not do those little intros for Kid Up, so, uh, Kid Up episodes. And uh, just also just want to remind everyone to leave me a suggestion for next week's episode down in the comments. Can't do this series without your suggestions, guys, so keep them coming. As for me, you can expect to see or hear, I guess, from your buddy Grizz soon. Till then, gents.